I remember when e-commerce first started taking off. Everyone thought it was the end of retail as we knew it. But after a decade in the game, I've learned that there's more to the story. It's easy to assume that the rise of e-commerce has made investing in retail property a thing of the past. I mean, who needs to visit a mall when you can get everything delivered to your door? But retail is more than just Westfields. Neighbourhood retail, for example, is performing incredibly well right now. But to truly grasp the state of retail investments, we need to take a step back and examine the past decade. So welcome back to part two of my retrospective series. Look, there's no denying the lingering effects of COVID-19 on consumer behaviour and the retail sector as a whole. When the pandemic first hit and uncertainty was at its all-time high, retail property returns took a significant hit globally. But the real game changer has been the e-commerce revolution. Even before COVID, online retail and digitalization were slowly but surely transforming the retail property game. The pandemic just put that shift into overdrive. While businesses were navigating strict lockdowns, e-commerce giants like Amazon were adapting quicker than ever. Their profits soared over 220% in response to the boom in online shopping. For retail investors, the trends have been more subtle, but just as prominent. E-commerce sales shot up by 74% between 2019 and 2022 alone. And for major chains like Kohl's, online orders now account for roughly 10% of their total sales. So yes, the rise in e-commerce has shaken things up, but as you'll see, it hasn't spelt the end of retail property investments. To get a clear picture, we tracked the overall performance of retail assets, mostly shopping centres across Australia from 2014 to 2023. And I'm talking total returns here, rental income combined with any capital gains from property value changes. Now, coming out of the 2008 global financial crisis, retail property was on a steady upward trajectory. Total returns climbed from 8.8% in 2014 up to 10.3% by 2016 as the global economy recovered. Things were really cooking in Q3 2017, with returns peaking at 10.8% thanks to increased local and foreign investment demand. Despite tighter lending conditions, steady urbanisation and digital tech advances kept investor interest in retail assets high. But then Q1 2018 marked the start of the prolonged decline. Returns kept dropping until they went negative in 2020 at the height of the pandemic chaos and underperformance across all commercial property. Now, the good news. Post-COVID, retail has mostly bounced back with returns above 5% again. Until mid-2023, that is, when inflation and rate hikes put a damper on things. But there are already signs of recovery in recent months as the RBA holds rates steady and the cost of finance is expected to ease in 2024. But overall, the returns only tell a part of the story. The real drama has played out in the capital growth numbers, which reflect a landscape of volatility, resilience, and long-term potential. Despite the fluctuations and those outlier pandemic years, one thing is crystal clear. The property market is cyclical by nature. Periods of rapid expansion are inevitably followed by market corrections and negative capital growth. But the retail sector has shown remarkable resilience in the face of structural shifts caused by COVID-19. While capital growth has contracted at times, those losses were largely offset by stable income returns, which averaged 5.39% over the past decade. This illustrates the importance of taking a long-term investment approach in the retail space. You have to be prepared to ride out the cycles and economic impacts. And speaking of economic factors, regional variations are often what determine successful strategies. For example, in 2023, Brisbane's retail market enjoyed a 5.5% rental growth. Meanwhile, Sydney saw a 1.37% decline over the same period. Of course, not all retail assets are created equal. When you peel back the layers, it becomes clear that traditional bricks and mortar retail took the biggest beating from the pandemic. Vacancy rates skyrocketed and empty city centres meant long periods of underperformance for many of those assets. But there was a silver lining despite this chaos. Certain alternative retail subclasses like neighbourhood retail centres and community malls prove their resilience. These more localised convenience oriented properties continue to attract customers even during lockdowns. The recovery in 2023 highlighted their strength with solid rental growth boosting performance. In fact, Brisbane saw neighbourhood retail rents jump up to 5.5% at year's end. And it's not just an outlier. Nationwide average vacancy rates hit 5.8% last year, the lowest they've been since 2019. 
That reflects increasing competition and investor appetite for high quality retail spaces in these non-traditional asset classes. So while the pandemic may have been the final nail in the coffin for struggling malls and high streets, it created opportunities in neighborhood and community retail that investors are taking note of. If you want a deeper dive into the potential of neighborhood retail centers, check out my previous videos breaking down why they're such a smart investment right now. So what does the future hold for retail property investors? As we look ahead in 2024, there are plenty of reasons for optimism in the retail space. Projections are hinting at recovery on multiple fronts. First off, potential interest rate cuts could provide a much needed boost. Investors have been lukewarm over the past year due to rate hikes, but easing that cost of finance could rekindle that spark. On top of that, we're seeing a surge in investor optimism. The pandemic clouds are parting and the folks are feeling bullish about retail's prospects once again. But the biggest driving force could be incoming supply, fueled by population growth. More people means more demand for convenient retail options close to home. Developers are already gearing up new neighborhood centers and community malls to meet that need. Now, I'm not saying it's gonna be smooth sailing across the board. Traditional retail still faces headwinds as shoppers flock back to CBDs and online options. But as I mentioned earlier, for the savvy investor, emerging subclasses like neighborhood retail present really ripe opportunities. These are the types of non-traditional assets that are redefining what it means to invest in retail property in the 2020s. If you position yourself correctly, you could be sitting on a gold mine as these trends play out. So basically what I'm trying to say is, don't write off retail just yet. The game has changed, but for those willing to adapt, the potential returns are massive. But of course, retail is just one piece of the commercial real estate puzzle. In our next retrospective, we'll be analyzing the performance of trends of another commercial asset over the past decade. You wanna pay close attention because having a balanced, diversified portfolio is key to maximizing returns while mitigating risk in the market. The insights could reveal hidden gems you're currently overlooking. So make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon and get notified as soon as the next video goes live. Cheers guys.